This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. War Eagle Auburn fans, and welcome to Tiger Tracks, your source for Auburn track and field and cross-country news and discussion. I'm your host, Jessica Loomis, and I'm here with my amazing husband, Kyle, to discuss the Clemson invite. There you go, adding amazing again. It always makes me think that you want something. I do want something. I want you to do a great job on the podcast tonight. Do I not always do a great job on the podcast? I want you to do an exceptionally great job on the podcast tonight. Do I not always do an exceptionally great job on the podcast? There's always opportunity for all of us to improve. And that's code for you sucked it up last time. Girl. I did not say that. Yes. I'm just saying that's that... what I'm interpreting. If we were all at the top, we would be Auburn athletes. And we are not. Oh my gosh. That's just that's so lame. Mm. But true at the same time. So all anyway, Auburn, like I said, we're going to discuss the Clemson invite. This was from Friday the 13th. January 13th and January 14th. Would you say it was unlucky? Actually, no. This was a pretty lucky meet for us. And not lucky. I was about to say. Skilled. uh, Skilled. There's no luck in this. But it felt like it was a lucky day because it was a pretty good day overall for... This is the second meet of the season. For some athletes. Exactly. It's It's the second meet for the quote unquote team but we just sent throws the last time around when we did cover that meet from before the uh, the holidays essentially so now we're actually talking about the majority if not all the team together going to be at the Clemson invite yes exactly indoors still because we're still in indoors I got to keep reminding myself that I know it is weird and so I watched some of the videos from this meet because they're sharing a lot more videos aren't they? I stink and love it Thank you. It is 2023. There should be no reason that I can't find the videos of these events online. So I love that the live results, you can actually watch a video clip of all of the meet or, you know, of that event. Yeah. And you could go just watch the, you know, little, if, even if you don't want to watch the whole thing or anything Right. Like that, you, you can pick which event you want to watch. Just having the highlights to be able to see. So it's like one thing when you read something that happens for track and field, but when you see it happening, that just brings it to a whole new level. And you could say that for any sport, right? But, you know, Absolutely. especially for a sport that doesn't get enough attention, like track and field. Yep. This really helps it. Yeah, absolutely. So, like we said, this is the first full meet for our new head coach, Leroy Burrell. Yep, and I'm happy to have him at the helm. And, you know, I've listened again. I always plug this. I listen to him and Andy Bertram each week during the season talk about these things. He continues to talk about they're going still a bit of a culture change. I don't know what that means exactly, but... To me, it's just the growing pains that come with the new way of doing things. Well, absolutely. I think that's, you know, just the culture change for any change, right? And then there's a lot of newcomers that came this year as well. So, Mm -hmm. like, some of our newcomers are Justin Stuckey, who is an NCAA medalist in the high jump. We've got a Big East champion, All-American, Sanaa Barnes, in the jumps. And SEC champion and NCAA medalist, um, help me with this one. Favor Ash. Thank you. Or Ashe, I think. Is it Ashe? I think it's Ashe. We tried, so we actually did look this up and tried to figure out how to do it, but we're just, we're, we're bad, bad um, at pronouncing. Favor Ashe, I think. And is. he is for sprints. Yes. So. And it does not shock me that we have new faces for sprints with Leor Burrell being the sprints guy himself back in the day. I mean, literally, could you imagine training under a previous <sighs> Olympian? Like, that is the stinking dream. In your specific area of track and field. Right? Like, It's wow. also a lot of pressure, too. I guess I'm just saying it's Olympian that that you're being coached by. That'd be like me training under Florence Nightingale. Yeah, that would be a little bit of pressure. As a nurse for people who don't know who Florence Nightingale is. Yeah. Because you you say that like most people will know who Florence is. and I mean, duh. I honestly, it took me two seconds to like make it click in my brain to remember who that is. Well, who would be the like perfect podcaster? Gosh, I don't know. Who's like the original Everybody's got a podcast these days, so who knows? That, yeah, that's true. So that's some of the exciting things about Auburn. So let's get into the Clemson invite specifics, the yes. highlights. Yes. So with the track and field show, I know we kind of hit on this last time, but this is our first big meet with right. everybody. So what we're going to do at the beginning of each episode, we will specifically talk about the highlights. So the athletes who came in one, two, or three in their event. PRs, all um, those things. Yes, PRs, significant um things like Moments. that. Moments. Correct. Thank you. Thank you for helping me in my time of failure to speak. Um, so it, was, we'll... it was pretty funny watching you struggle over here on, on the on the other side of the camera, or not camera, but the microphone. Appreciate it. So we'll hit the highlights and then we will at, then after that we will go through all of the results for all of our athletes. 
And one thing you can also expect in each Dragonfield show is Jessica and Kyle struggling through names, as we've already demonstrated. We will definitely mispronounce names, especially at the beginning of the season when we haven't heard some of these names on other podcasts. So please bear with us and forgive us. And we you, are human and we make mistakes like everybody else. And if you are an athlete or a family of the athlete and want to let us know how it's pronounced, please do so. We will take the We know, always appreciate it when people help us out because there are, you know, names that we haven't seen before. But, but we can only uh, get better, so let's pile through it right now. That's right. So do you want to start us off? Yes. Or, I'll start us off with some of the highlights, well, actually. Us off Never mind. I'll start with the first couple. She must want this one or something. No, I just I just thought. I... You go right ahead. Honey. Okay. Well, a, a new name to us. Alyssa Quinones Mixon earned the second highest Auburn pole vault record with a mark of 4.05 meters. We've been used to talking about on the guy's side. James, Alex. It was Alex? Well, Alex Bardanis and James, and James Corson. James Corson a lot. So it's nice to talk about some of the ladies here. Finally. In the, in the so that's vault. why you can continue on. But I just really wanted to talk about a female pole vaulter because we haven't had one in so long. Forever. Jeremy Zamet broke the 36 year old freshman record in the men's long jump with a jump of 7.84 meters, 25. You're gonna have, what are those metrics that you're throwing out here? Listen, 20, I don't know. 25. Feet, 8.5 go inches. We're just going to go the, met, the the metric system. 7.84 meters. The previous record was whatever that... 24 feet, 9.5 inches. There we go. Was set by Boris Goins back in 1986. Folks, I am old, but I was not born yet. Isn't that then. amazing? Like, he beat a record. Obviously, Jeremy wasn't born then since he is a, co- a college athlete. But right. how amazing is that? 36-year-old freshman record. Yep. Next, we've got, uh, I guess, the king himself, LeBron. <laughs> He's named LeBron. LeBron Besick won the men's eight, or excuse me, 400 meter dash in a time of 47.17 seconds. So literally, he is the king yes. because he got the gold medal. Exactly. For, at least for this meet. Absolutely. So, and then the queen, I guess, Ariana Sharp, she won the women's 400 meter dash and in 53.01 seconds. And is the SEC freshman of the week. It's a nice honor to ha- add to her starting career here at Auburn. Absolutely. I, this is one of the events that if you haven't watched it, you should go watch. Obviously, we, we've known this. If you listen to me ever, forever, I am partial to the 400. I was a 400 runner. So obviously, this is like something that I can relate to. I was not nearly this good. I was horrible compared to this. But this is amazing. And it was just a really exciting race to watch. Mm-hmm. And we got Favor Ash, as we've already talked about and mentioned. Ashe, excuse me, Luis. I told you we're going to struggle through it. Uh, Plays second in the 60-meter dash. And, of course, Maddie Malone won the women's weight throw with a toss of 21.53 meters. No shocker there whatsoever. Literally another throw, no shocker. Kyle Brown placed second in the men's weight throw. And then Mara Hewalt won the women's shot put and earned a PR of 17.29 meters. And And that's not all. She broke the 10-year school record. Records just being broke already in the first two meters. I meet love of the this. Season. And honestly, I was shocked that the record is 10 years old because I feel like we talked about so many wins that Mara had last mm-hmm. season. Yeah. That I can't believe she didn't break the record last year. And I believe this is the record of Valentina Muzarek, who we talked about in the very first season of Tiger Tracks. Who are you right now? Is that true? I have no idea. I believe it's Valentina Muzarek. I could be wrong on that, but. How do you? It's just one of those names that you remember. It kind of sticks out to you. So, like, I, I how do you remember, remember something that we talked about years ago in our just, first Tiger Track season, babe? I don't even remember when that there's was. There's little nuggets of track and field that have just I'm lodged so themselves. So proud of you. In what there. was the previous record? Since you know all I Valentina just, Mazzari. That's all I knew was the name. But <laughs> I am very hey, impressed. Hey, get, that is a uh, medal for me in terms of memory. So, now that we've talked about the highlights, now we're going to go through all of the results, so you'll hear some of the repeats again, but we do want to make sure that we honor and let you know how some of the other athletes are doing, how they might be leading themselves up to winning one or getting a PR themselves in the next coming meets, if they didn't do that already. So, we'll start with the women's long jump. We got Janiah Jones in fifth out of 23 athletes, 6.07 meters. Essence Thomas right behind her, seventh overall, 6.01 meters. Paula... Okay, here we go. Uh, Gravogel, 8th overall, 5.85 meters. And Elise Eddins, 14th overall, 5.52 meters. And we already mentioned in the pole vault, Alyssa Kionas mixon won the gold, 4.05 meters. You did a good job. Um, for the women's weight throw, like we said, Maddie Malone getting first out of 11 competitors. 
with a throw of 21.53 meters, followed by Mara Hewalt getting third. We didn't mention that before, but Mara also got a third place medal with a throw of 20.23 meters. Danielle Gregory, another familiar face for mm-hmm. us, getting seventh with a throw of 18.19 meters. And Megan Haig in 11th place with a throw of 12.83 meters. Get used to the names Maddie, Mara, and Danielle all season, names that we've been talking about over the last few seasons, but it's nice to see Megan a new face face in there kind of absolutely helping the crew continue to get better and it looks like megan is a thrower like to her core because she doesn't only do weight throw but here she does shot put as well she competes there so for the women's shot put we had mara hewall like we said before winning overall first place out of 16 athletes with a throw that pr of 17.29 meters and just to put it in perspective when she was in oshkosh last meet gosh Yes. Sorry. Last meet in December, her throw was 16.32 meters. So almost a full meter farther. Mm -hmm. That's that's significant. Very impressive. You can understand why and how she was able to break a 10-year-old record. Yeah, absolutely. From apparently Valentina Muzark. If that I remember. You, I hope you're right. So <laughs> next for shot put. Just act like you know it and nobody will ask. That's fair. <laughs> Megan Haig, she placed fifth overall with a throw of 13.88 meters. And Trinity Love placed ninth in 12.74 meters. Moving over to the jumps, we got women's high jump. Sana, I guess is how we say that. Barnes, third overall uh, bronze medal in 14 competitors, 1.78 meters. Paula Gravogel, 6th overall, 1.69 meters. And Elise ends again, 11th, 1.59 meters. We got the women's triple jump, uh, Amy Warren, uh, who got 4th out of 9 competitors, 12.98 meters. And then Janiah Jones, 7th overall, 12.61 meters. All right. For the women's 60-meter hurdle prelims, we didn't actually have any athletes make it to the finals, so we're going to talk about the prelim results. We had four competitors, and there were 26 athletes. So Paula Gravul placed 10th in 8.53 seconds. Naya Benton Andrews placing 15th in 8.75 seconds. Elise Heddens placing 21st in 9.08 seconds. And Esther. Mm-hmm. Yep, go ahead. Esther Diza Mbello. That's, that's pretty good. That's how I would have done it. Okay. Sorry, placed Esther. <laughs> 25th in 9.41 seconds. And part of the problem here, Kyle, is not her name, it is the type of um, font that I used. It's not very conducive to the reading, you know, vowel after an L. So that was my bad. There you go. For we'll messing get, that up, not Esther's. We will get it down. Next up, the women's one mile. Haley Marston, seventh overall out of 18 competitors. Five minutes, 5.8 seconds. The women's 60 meter prelims. We got Shante Klinkscale, 10th overall, 29 competitors total. 7.39 seconds was her run. So talking about the women's 400 meter, which we kind of already highlighted, Ariana Sharp getting that first place gold medal and the freshman of the week. Freshman of the week. Um, with a time of 53.01 seconds, followed by her sister, Amira Sharp, placing fifth overall in 55.26 seconds. And finally for Auburn, Layla Hasbrock in 17th place with 59.5 seconds. Since you talked about sisters in this one, I think you should continue it on because I'm guessing this is another sister as well. That's true. I did not even We're just going to assume that. the For the odds. women's 300 meter, we had Ariel Sharp placing 11th out of 13 in 41.23 seconds. You know, this isn't the first time and won't be the last time we've talked about some family ties in different across I different events, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of it who it is uh, right now from cross country help me, the two brothers and then the two sister and the one sister. Oh, the Rogers. The Rogers. Thank you. That's Jack. Who. Jack, Evan, and... Samantha. Samantha Rogers. Yes. So it's not the first time this has happened in track and field for Auburn, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get used to saying the Sharks. I love running families. They're just the nicest people. Too bad you don't have one from, from with us now. <laughs> we are not, the, the Loomises are not runners. Mm, no. Not that the Reeses were really much outside of you anyway. My brother, my dad... My uncle? I feel like, yes, we were. Were we good? You're more no. than us. That's fair enough right there. Women's 200 meter, Shante Klinkscale, sixth overall out of 30 competitors. We've got Nia Benton-Andrews, 14th out of those 30 as well. 
the women's 3,000 meter run, the big long one, one of the long ones, Hannah Tarwater, who we've talked a lot about with cross country, she gets the bronze medal third out of 28 competitors, nine minutes, 50.5 seconds. And that is your women's totals. That's insane. That's, that's a lot of that's people. a lot of people in the first full meet of the season to talk about. It is. So do you I guess my question to you would be, I feel like you throw a lot of people out there at the beginning. Yep. And I wonder if we'll see as many, you know, competitors at, at a lot of the different meets. I hope so, because here are the things that I'm missing. We didn't see any did we see any women long jumpers or triple jumpers? We saw triple we saw jump a couple, and long jump, right? yes. We got high jump, triple jump, and I think long, long jump. Long jump, you're right, you're right. We just talked out. about it so long ago. <laughs> yes, that's how many we talked about. <laughs> um I really like to see the jumps as well because that's kinda we we know obviously that the weight throws are big for Auburn, mm-hmm. but I feel like we can really shine in our jumps and our throws as well. I mean, and sorry, our jumps and our vaults as well. Well, um, the strength of the team, but specifically the women's team right now, is definitely going to be your throws, followed yep. probably by some of your distance runners, yep. especially because they've been around for quite some time. And that's another thing I look forward to seeing is maybe some more three thousand meter runners. Yeah. And God bless them, because that is not something I would do on a 200-meter track. <laughs> Absolutely not. Don't get her started on that, folks. 15 laps around that track. No. Let's talk about the boys. So, we, we, it's my turn to talk about. You go ahead. In fact, she's going to just run all over me Well, tonight. I mean, and I got to talk about Kyle, so I got to talk about the Kyles. Kyle can't talk about Kyle? No, that would be confusing. Fine. So, starting with the men's weight throw. Kyle Brown placing second out of 11, getting that silver medal with a throw of 20.48 meters. Eric Ebel right behind him placing fourth in 20.10 meters. Kyle Moisson placing sixth, 19.5 meters. Matthew Ruff placing seventh, 16.27 meters. And John Leonard placing eighth in 15.34 meters. Both the Kyles improved their throws from the, uh, actually they took a, a step down. I, le- I read that backwards on there. Yeah, That's bless my fault. your heart. But it's okay. Because we had five competitors this time. Yes. You, that team is really strong, led by uh, Pat Ebel, I'm guessing Eric's dad, that we discussed last time. So ex- excited to watch them progress this season. Most definitely. So moving on to men's shot put, we had Matthew Ruff placing fourth out of 19 athletes in a, with a throw of 17.15 meters. Ethan Richter in eighth place, 16.42 meters. Grant Griffin placing ninth in 16.15 meters. And Alex Spyrodonidis placing 13th in 13.42 meters. The men's long jump, we got a bunch to talk about. Jeremy Zamet, who we've already mentioned. The silver medal for him out of 20 competitors, 7.84 meters. David Edmondson, 8th overall, 7.27 meters. John Murray, 10th overall, 7.13 meters. Alex Spyridonidis, 12th overall, 7.02 meters. And then Michael May, 15th overall, 6.97 meters. The men's pole vault, we're used to talking about James Corson here, and I guess he's moved on off, or, or at least is not competing this season. Uh, men's pole vault for us, though, this year, Michael May, a new name, sixth overall in, out of nine competitors, 4.55 meters. And then John Murray, eighth overall, 4.10 meters, however you want to say that. <laughs> it's kind of redundant the way I said it. But... <laughs> it's okay. Um, for the men's high jump, we had Dontavious Hill, another name that's familiar to us. He placed third overall out of nine competitors with a jump of 2.1 meters. Justin Stuckey placing fourth in 2.05 meters. And TJ Funches placing sixth in 2.05 meters. This is just the beginning for Dontavious Hill. We, Absolutely. Is, he came back for a fifth year, I believe, is what his extra year that some athletes got because of COVID and all that. And so... He did big things last year, big expectations this year, just the beginning for him. You got the men's 1,000-meter run. There's Rex Green there, fifth overall out of 15. Two minutes, 25.04 uh, seconds. Evan Rogers, who we mentioned. We just Rod- said, yeah. just talked about the Rogers family already. Eighth overall, two minutes, 27 uh 27.34 seconds. We got the men's 60 meter hurdle preliminary, so nobody made it to the finals, but we'll at least mention them. Michael May, 14th overall at a 19, 8.35 seconds. Alex Spyrodondas, 15th overall, 8.39 seconds. And then John Murray, 16th overall, 8.44 seconds. So moving on to the men's 60 meter prelims, we did have one athlete, Favor Ashe, make it to the finals. So 
we'll talk about him and then all the other athletes here as well in their prelim run. So Favor placed first in prelims out of 37 athletes with a time of 6.59 seconds. Ian Myers placing ninth in 6.72 seconds. Charlie Sexton placing 18th in 6.86 seconds. David Edmondson placing 29th in 7.03 seconds. And Matthew Kless placing 30th in 7.07 seconds. So for finals, there are eight athletes that make it to the finals, the top eight. For the men's 60 meter finals, two of those athletes did not actually finish the race. So I didn't actually watch this one. So I don't know if it was because of false starts or they didn't compete or just didn't finish. Um, but so there were only six athletes in the finals, actually. And Favor Ashe complete, competed and got second place, but ran a faster time. It's interesting. Than he did. It's really interesting. So that, that tells me somebody was sandbagging a little bit or they just had a better race. They always time. ask you about if somebody sandbags in the prelims just a little bit. They so. could. The only thing that I really don't think is the 60 meter is so incredibly short. Obviously, right. a six second It's hard race. to sandbag in such a so quick race. That, I mean, you know, you just think even getting out of the blocks, yeah. that, that literally will make or break your run. So his time in the finals, getting him the second place silver medal was 6.57 seconds and this he would have competed about that who won was somebody from a different heat since he got first Correct. in his heat so well he yes and he got first overall so oh, it that's wouldn't true matter. i guess that that is true to think about the way <laughs> it was overall the silly goose it's just weird to think about you were faster and then yet somebody still yeah isn't that wild you. but great start for him regardless all right we got just a few more left to discuss here the men's 600 meter run such a silly silly run She's got a lot of things to gripe about in indoor uh, track and field. 600 meter. 600 meter. What is that? Is it a 400? Is it an 800? No, it's a 600. That is weird. Davis Plowden, before she gets started, 10th overall out of 17 competitors, 1 minute 20.7 seconds. The men's 400 meter run. Is that better for you? That's much better. My favorite. LeBron, the King, Besick, first overall out of 19 for the gold medal, 47.17 seconds. John Stevens, 11th overall out of 19 competitors, 49.87 seconds. So for the men's 300 meter, another silly, silly. Silly. You just have no opinions about. I just, I think that is such an odd. Anywho. So LeBron Bessick placed seventh out of 35 when, in a time of 33.44 seconds. John Stevens placed 17th, 34.55 seconds. For the men's 200 meter, something we are more familiar with. F uh, Favor Eshe placed fifth out of 20 athletes in 21.34 seconds. Ian Myers placed sixth in 21.37 seconds. And Charlie Sexton placed ninth in 21.69 seconds. Favor Eshe has got a little bit of versatility about him doing some quicker sprints. And then these are still quick races. But, but they're long, a much longer sprint than a 60 meter. You have to prepare for it and, and do different things I absolutely guess. you know it's more than just give it all in you know such a short sprint yeah. you actually got to kind of not pace yourself but give yourself some time to build up towards that last little what do you call it the kick at the end of a race i don't know that there's a kick in a 200 meter cow that's fair that's probably look at me just trying to insert terminology and, and it didn't I'm just work shooting you down didn't work out all right last one here it's been a minute uh men's 3000 meter run names that you're going to be very familiar with if you listen to the cross country season with us ryan canane second overall he led the way in cross country he leads the way in indoor track and field silver medal out of 36 competitors Eight minutes, 11.3 seconds. Cooper Atkins with the bronze, eight minutes, 14.6 seconds. And Louis O'Loughlin, fifth. So all our guys in the top five. Top five. Eight, point, eight minutes, 7.0 seconds. That is impressive. Eight, 17. Excuse me. Sorry. That is impressive. Very impressive, especially when you think out of 36 athletes. Yes. Like, that's a lot of people. Lots of golds, lots of silvers, lots of bronzes, and lots of new faces. I love it. And lots to be really excited for, for this whole season. And, you know, this, this it's exactly what you wanted to kind of get the first official big meet with our new head coach at the helm in indoor track and field. Absolutely. And there is no rest for the weary because Auburn competes again, like this weekend, January 20th and 21st at the Vanderbilt Invite in, obviously, Nashville, Tennessee. So. Going to go get some SEC action, even though we probably already ran against SEC teams. We did. And at the Clemson Invite. But we we're actually going to be on their home turf. That's true. So, War Eagle. War Eagle.
Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the E2C Network. On your way out, I want to remind you to stop by E2Cnetwork.com. It's your one-stop shop for all our content across our podcast, YouTube channel, and much more. To stay up to date with us, make sure you're following social media accounts such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. While our content here may always be Auburn sports heavy, if it's orange and blue, it's what we do. War Eagle.